Hello everyone, thanks for tuning back in. This is Eric KJ4YZI checking out another video on some interesting information to swell your mind with a little bit more knowledge. So take a look, take a listen to this. Is that another digital mode? Well, not really. But it is something that may be of interest to you. And it's something that you can totally check out without buying any more equipment than what you have. What you're hearing there is a weather fax downloading what they call a radio fax or a radio facsimile or weather fax or HF fax. But you're downloading this decoding it in this situation i'm using an app from the same creator of the slow scan tv droid app and the droid psk app with the wolfie link this is the weather facts by the same developer and i have this connected to my icom 7300 which can be connected to any device that can receive the appropriate frequency and you can download and look right here look at this you can even see tropical cyclones in the atlantic Look, so we're going to get into who uses this. Eric, why are you showing me this? Well, I hope you at least enjoy the effort and give me a thumbs up for the effort of making this. But we're going to talk about why this may be important and who may use this. Do you need a big 7300 like this to do this? No, but I'm just having so much fun with this new radio. I'm starting to finally get back into using it again, and uh, I love it. So I just like it on having it on video. Look at that. So beautiful. Anyways, let's talk about weather facts. So who would use something like this? Well, let's talk about the history of where this came from first. Um, this isn't, again, this is another thing that is not new by any means. This actually preceded slow scan TV, one of the videos I just made. It goes back to the 1950s. You got to think, how do people get weather information when they're out in marine, you know, maritime, they're in the middle of the Atlantic or Ocean or the Pacific Ocean or wherever they are. You don't have internet. You don't have a local t uh, TV station. You get all your information by radio. Of course, now there's satellite out there and, you know, that can be costly. And it piqued my interest to see and look up just for a quick fun fact, exactly how much is satellite internet at sea? And you can look here, for instance, this Iridium Pilot is, <laughs> is the cheapest at $4,793, $4,793 for the bundle, okay? Speeds up to 128 kilobits per second, and it's significantly faster than a handheld satellite phone, which is 25 times slower than dial-up. Oh, my gosh. Look down here. <laughs> here you go. Inmarsat, Inmarsat, Fleet 1. So that runs at a max speed of 100 kilobits a second, 32.95. But look at the pricing here. For $60 a month, you get 10 megabytes a month within the home zone. And to give you an idea of what that means... That's a few, that's like five or six emails these days that you could write, you know, with a picture attached maybe. But I'm recording on my camera at 100 megabytes a second when I'm in 4K and 60 megabytes in se a second in high def. I could burn my total allowance of monthly data out in the ocean in a, a tenth of a second on my, <laughs> on my video camera. Wow. And then you go down here. Look, these are pretty cheap. Hardware cost is only 13000 30000 for the V7 and 60000 for the V11. Wow. Okay. So you can see that there is uh, a definite advantage if you're, because to check internet, uh, to, to be on, at sea and check the internet to see where the tropical storms or hurricanes or, you know, ocean uh, storms may be, it's free over the airwaves but it's definitely costly from satellite we're spoiled now with our smartphones touch screens on battery that can be charged with a pocket-sized solar panel or our laptops and computers that are connected to short-wave receivers with really fancy touch screens but back in the day it started 
countrywide over landlines with big machines like this. It seems that Moorhead or Muirhead was a very prominent manufacturer of this stuff because Google searching has led me to a lot of these machines. And this had 18 inch wide paper. This was uh, dated in the 60s. And it would, you know, print out the information you need on the papers and they would run for hours at a time. Uh, for people in airports or coastal areas, bases, or even maritime, to give you the information you need on charts. And uh, Moorhead was very uh, confident in their product. So then they went from landlines to international over shortwave frequencies, what we're still using today as shortwave. And that can cover parts of the globe with different frequencies at different times of day and night. So then they came out, you know, a few years later with machines that were a little more compact. This one kind of looks more like an answer machine in the 80s my parents used to have. And uh, this one is a little more aesthetically pleasing, at least, if it was on your boat. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this one right here was actually for sale on an online uh, listing for a lot of money. If you have one of a machine like this or one of these machines or, or such, teach me about it. Tell me in the comments. Tell me, you know, about what you had or what you used to use. I'd love to learn from you. There are other options out there for personal computers, PCs, to have weather facts, HF weather facts decoding here. Software, some of them I'm not familiar with. Some of them you have to buy. Some are free. I just downloaded this one, CD, or S-C-A-T-T-Y. It's not registered. But you can see here it is decoding a rather large chart here. And uh, I can look right now and see. So it's like Florida over here, okay? So I'm over here. And you have uh, different areas of interest for weather here. So it's like Africa over here. And what it looks like is that this would be another storm, a tropical storm or a wave coming off Africa that would be forming over here. So if I was out somewhere where there was no Internet and no other means other than receiving it over HF, if you had a printer on board your boat, you could save this and print it out. So, uh, some interesting stuff. Very useful stuff. I might make myself a goal to try to use this to calculate my weather the next few days. That might be uh, fun to, uh, you know, rely solely on this and not what the news media hypes up and blows out of proportion. So, this came, yeah, National Weather Service. Uh, let's see what else is here. Oceanweather.gov. There you go. Ocean-weather.gov. Or ocean.weather.gov. Listen here. Now that signaled the end of it. Now we'll pause here and I'll wait till we hear the beginning of the next transmission. So that was the beginning of the transmission. And it signals go. And um, you can see down here the LPM speed was detected. Uh, lines per minute speed. So that start tone gave it an idea of how fast it's sending and what it should be decoding. And the program on auto picks up and starts drawing. Similar to... Uh, a few of the other digital modes that we've talked about, like slow scan TV, there are different sounds here based on the pixels, if you will, on what's decoding. So if you had a completely black bar here, it would have more of a solid sound, but it's alternating with the black and the white and the different lines in there. So, I'm decoding this here on 20 meters, or not 20 meters, excuse me, 12.748.10. And we're going to show you a page that I referenced once or twice to see where different frequencies are. This map looks like it's coming in sideways, so there'll be a lot, to, a lot to draw here. And you can see, now, even in, this is really poor propagation right now. I have no signal on my S meter. I can hear it. I could 
barely see it on the trace in the waterfall on my 7300. But I hear it's there, and it's still decoding. Of course, the stronger the signal, the brighter it will be on the map. But even in poor conditions, you will see that you can, you know, decode or discern what it's showing you unless it's really, really bad. And after a few minutes, here is your North American Ice Service report. <laughs> the uh, iceberg analysis. So, if you're in the North Atlantic waters, looking at this map here, you can see where there may be icebergs. This is a tough copy here. You can see it's, you know, really rough, poor, uh, poor band conditions at the current moment. Later on, this will be a lot better. Uh, but, uh, judging by what I've seen every night, where it really opens up towards the evening. Uh, so, there you go. There's your iceberg report in case you decide to go where the Titanic went. Here's a site with all the information that I browsed upon for my frequencies, and the link is below in the description. This is the National Weather Service NOAA Marine Forecast for HF Radio Facts. And if you go, there's some interesting information here to read. But if you go down here, take a look at this. So here's your frequencies here, and the different sites or offices that are transmitting that. Now, I'm listening currently to Boston. And if you remember, my frequency on my radio is 12.748.1. So, if you read here, the assigned frequencies are shown for carrier frequency subtract 1.9 kilohertz. So, you're tuning your radio uh, minus 1.9 kilohertz from 12.750, which puts you at 12.748.1. And the time of this frequency broadcast, these here. So, Look here, you have one frequency here at 4.235, that's uh, between 75 and 60 meters, and the time that that broadcasts. And then you have one just above 60 meters, one just above 40 meters, and one just below 20 meters. And then you have, uh, from New Orleans, you have uh, different frequencies here as well. Actually, they have one here just below 17 meters. So... Uh, Kodiak, Alaska here, and uh, wherever this one is, Port Reyes, Point Reyes, I'm not sure where that's from, or where that is, but they even have one below 12 meters here. So you have several options depending on the band conditions and your antenna or setup at your location to receive it on multiple frequencies. I just happen to have good luck on 12.748.1, and uh, my radio is set to sideband, of course. If you're interested in something like this, but you don't want to use an entire full-fledged HF radio to do this, let's say you're backpacking, these Kato's or Texan Worldband AM-FM sideband shortwave radios are pretty popular. I've known several people that have had a Texan, and they work they work well. And they, you know, for a hundred dollar radio, ninety six dollars, they they work. So you tune in the frequency, and the thing about one of these is make sure it's got a headphone jack. See, this one's got a headphone jack, comes with earbuds, but instead get a stereo cable or a mono cable and run it from the audio out on this radio to the input line in on your computer and set the program accordingly and use this to decode or receive your weather facts from your backpack setup without having a gigantic HF radio because some may not be a ham radio operator and they're just checking this mode of operation out. Something like this may come in handy or you can find one maybe at a used pawn shop or a thrift store or something and uh, that may get you you know up or you can use this option this is a $20 SDR dongle that plugs into your USB you attach a antenna to here and usually these will tune uh, DC to light almost I mean they'll tune from way down in the AM broadcast portion all the way up past ham so using something like this you can set it up on your computer with a little bit of help on YouTube or Google to find out how to set one of these up if you've never done it. And in a little $20 device, you get the audio received from this and send it to your program, and you can decode weather facts with one of these. Very minimal price uh, for one of these compared to a HF radio. So with my HF weather facts app here from Wolfie LLC in the Play Store, not sure if it's on iPhone, but looking at this app here, that was perfect reception, perfect band conditions, a really good image on my phone, my smartphone, with nothing more than a cable attached to my radio, just a stereo cable so that the audio goes from the radio to the app. 
you can see this looks a lot better than it did with what I was decoding today, but you know, the band conditions always change. So maybe you don't care about this. Maybe this is something you've used before. Maybe you're fascinated, but whether you care or not, I hope you at least leave a thumbs up for the effort of this video bringing it to you, showing you something you may not have known before. And there'll be more videos on the way, so stay tuned. Turn on notifications so you get alerts when videos like these are posted immediately. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.